Hello friends, welcome back to our help series. This time we're going to be talking about a, a situation that I'm sure a lot of us have been in before. And that is when you completely run out of water and don't know where to go from here and everything starts to spiral out of control. Um, I've been in this situation a couple times and um, there's some not so obvious solutions to this honestly. It's kind of an easy problem to run into. So we're going to run through our three solutions like we would typically do. Uh, this is just going to get escalating in more and more complexity, but this is honestly one of the easier solutions to solve. There's not any super high-tech way to solve this, at least not effectively. So I guess it's not super going to fit this time, but whatever. All right, let's talk about the basic one. Okay, we're in our setup base here. We were looking over at the food earlier. This is supposed to be our water area, but it is bone dry. So we are gonna have to find a way to get water, but also one of the biggest things that we're gonna have to deal with is uh, making sure that we're not using water unnecessarily. Um, I showed you this area because this is a ridiculous amount of food production for only 11 duplicates, but I have seen bases that are set up similarly like this and we just basically need to find all the things that are going to be using our water and try to substitute them until we can fix our problem. So first of all, let's kind of examine our pipes. So we have a water area set up that's slowly trickling water in every once in a while, and then it goes back out to the place that it's supposed to go. You know, like the uh, food every once in a while over to our bathrooms, that kind of stuff. The bathrooms are fine. They're actually going to generate a little bit more water for us, so that's going to help. The food's a big problem though. These are a lot of consumers of water over here. And then we also have a oxygen system that is based on water also. So we need to find a way to get rid of our dependence on those two things and substitute them with something else. So hopefully by this stage of the game. Um, also, by the way, I did get rid of a bunch of water that's around here because one of the solutions is you could just kind of go find more water and use that. But that's also gonna run out, so I'm not gonna encourage you to do that right now. We're just going to be basically making our water dependence drop to zero as quickly as we can. So, um, let's check uh, inventory here and just start getting rid of solutions that are taking up all of our water so that we don't run out. So first of all, if we're going to have an oxygen system that's going to be using water, we're eventually going to run out of oxygen. We need a way to replace that. So, easiest thing is let's just check if we have any algae. And if we do, that's something we can live off for quite a while. So, I'm going to start doing that. And also, this is another thing that I've seen before, is use of these algae terrariums. Um, I haven't talked about these before, but that's because they are really bad. So definitely do not use them. I just have them set up here because I see them in bases all the time. They are one of the worst things to use if you're trying to conserve on water. So I'm going to get rid of those, and we're going to replace our oxygen system and just kind of go back to algae, which is usually where people start. And I'll show you a couple of ways that you can keep those up also. Uh, I guess we probably want to spread these out, actually. Like one here, I don't know, one here, sure. Then we'll leave the one in the middle. There we go. So yeah, we'll just switch over to that, and I'm going to disconnect our uh, water base system until we have a good buildup, and then we'll switch back to it. This is also why I don't recommend getting on a system like this until you are truly ready. That was weird. Uh, the game, like, loaded and did something weird and made it disconnect, but I guess it still worked. So, yeah, I don't recommend a setup like this using electrolyzers until uh, much later into the game, until your cooling is stabilized and your power is stabilized, just so you don't have this problem. Also, water being stabilized is kind of a key here, too, which I'm kind of demonstrating. So, we disconnected this. This is no longer using water. We've replaced our oxygen system, got rid of our algae uh, terrariums. Yes, algae terrariums. Let's check a couple of other things that are not so obvious, one of which is this water cooler. Uh, my duplicates are basically just drinking this and wasting it, so if you just disable the building, this will still give the benefit to the room. And this is a needed building for your great hall, so that's why I have this here. But if you disable it, it'll still retain the bonus, so I don't need to have this operational in any way. The other thing that is a big deal that a lot of new players miss is this, this micro musher. Um, a lot of times people will be using this to make mush bar and life, lice loaf and that kind of stuff. These are the biggest beginner traps in the game to the point that like, I don't even know if I would have them in the game if it were up to me. So just do not ever make these two things. They are a huge trap 
Tofu is fine, but you're basically never going to find it. So yeah, I just turned that one off too. And because we're going to be relying on or not making any more mush bars, I'm going to get rid of the mush fry errand. I also want to really optimize the food that I'm creating. Ideally, I don't want to use any sleet wheat grain that I find on frost ponds. I'd rather just have it used for berry sludge because that's much more effective for the calories we're going to be creating. So yeah, we've already ticked off a whole bunch of uh, water consumers here. Let's get rid of the last couple, uh, one of which is our food area here. You can see there's a lot of food that's growing. We have a decent amount of uh, food that's, you know, uh, in our stores so that we will be okay for a little while. So I'm just going to get rid of a bunch of these. I'll keep a little bit of it because I think keeping a little is fine until we can get the water turned back on. But in the meantime, I really want to replace this with something that's more simple. So I'm just going to replace this with meal wood. Um, and hopefully you still have dirt by this point in the game. I'm deleting every other one because it makes it a lot easier to replace all this at once. So now that I've got it all, uh, every other one done there, I'm just going to go ahead and throw down these farm tiles like that and just put in meal wood instead. You do want to make sure you still have enough dirt, so hopefully if you weren't on mush bars for too long, you should have plenty of dirt left. You can also go out on the map and start digging things out. And that would be another thing I'd recommend. If you're out of algae, um, definitely get out on the map because there's a lot of extra pockets of it around here, and there's no reason for it to just sit here if you could be using it to save your base effectively. So yeah, going to replace that, going to get all of our new food up here. We'll check back on this in a little bit after I take an editing break. There's no reason to watch me replace the whole thing, but that's kind of the idea. Is just start planting mealwood seeds as much as you can into these regular farm tiles. You don't need the uh, other... I guess I could have left the other farm tiles here if I really wanted to, but I ultimately don't want that much food to be done here. I just want these. Uh, yeah, so we've got that replaced. Let's also talk about the uh, other ways we can supplement our food, because if this is not operational, mealwood's only going to get us so far. I talk about this a lot in my walkthroughs, is basically getting access to your sleet wheat. Because, oh, this is perfect timing. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, you can basically get sleet wheat grain to be harvested naturally from this, and then your duplicates will take it back and run it here to your micro musher to be used for berry sludge. I obviously need to get my water reflowing again before this is going to work out. But this, uh, in combination with a very small amount of blossoms, is one of the most effective food sources in the entire game. So we will work our way back to that over the course of this video, but just make sure you're not wasting your sleet wheat grain on other foods that are nowhere near as efficient. So yeah, let's talk about algae here really quickly. Um, these slime biomes, and since we're going to be living on algae for a little while and not using our water, you can just kind of mine into these slime biomes like this. And if you're having a problem with uh, polluted oxygen because of the slime that's going to be coming down, the way you can deal with this is just put deodorizers every so often put down a mesh tile, something like that. It doesn't have to be overly, like, you don't have to really go out of your way to avoid this. Your duplicates are going to get exposure to slime lung sooner or later anyway, but the amount of time you could spend to make sure they're absolutely safe from this is not really worth it. Just make sure that when the slime gets mined out that you have some bins somewhere, and especially if you have bins that are sitting under a little bit of water like this, have them requesting slime at a pretty decent priority, and then they'll run down here and they'll take care of it. Oh. Turn off my disinfectant. We don't need that. So if the slime is all just kind of sitting down here, you can also set up another thing, just in case you need to keep your algae production up for a little while longer. I don't usually recommend this, but if you're in a desperate situation, you can put a couple of these algae distillers down, and it'll turn the slime into... Uh, algae and you'll also get a little bit of water from it too which can definitely help if we're like really desperate which in this case we definitely are so just manufacturing a little bit of extra water and also keeping our oxygen sources up uh while we're so while we're trying to transition here we get these hooked up to power really quickly so you can see i'm running duplicates ought to get that in a second let me clear all this so once they get that hopefully you'll have a couple of storage bins full of slime I also have my polluted dirt in here too, which we could use for oxygen, but it's not the most powerful source. I'm just going to leave it there for right now. So yeah, you can just kind of distill your uh, slime down into algae here really quickly. You don't need a ton of them, but this will produce some heat. It will require some power. I don't want to stay on this for long. I would really rather take care of my water problem. 
The other thing that's kind of an issue is you might notice that the oxygen setup that I have up here is really being cooled by a bunch of wheeze warts. And if I were to go out on the map, one of my biggest concerns is that the bristle blossoms here have a temperature requirement that only goes up to about 30 degrees Celsius. So if I go find some water out on the map, a lot of times it's borderline or it's too hot to use. Um, this is one of the first things that looks obvious. It's like, oh, why don't I just use this water? But the problem with this water is that it's way too hot. So we're not really going to make it anywhere unless we can cool this. And this solution for cooling is okay, like for an oxygen type of setup. I don't like it that much because it does require requ require some form of fuel in the sense of phosphorite. I'd really have this rather have this getting cooled in another way. And we're going to kind of talk about that next. Uh, it's a little bit of a roundabout way of generating water, but early game cooling is a big deal. And if you don't have a way to deal with that, then here's something that will both cool or at least allow you to cool your base and produce a little bit of extra water while we help our, our base get back on its feet. So let's check that out. Okay, let's solve two problems at once, shall we? Let's, first of all, get this replaced as quickly as we can. Um, this was a simple way to cool an oxygen setup that you might have early in the game, but I don't want to rely on these warts for too long. So I'm just going to crack this open, which was just a simple water lock that I had in here. I guess I'll just let all this hydrogen out, because I don't really need it. Um, yeah. We'll just make a mess, whatever. It'll all get fixed later anyway. So I want my duplicates to be able to get down here and start digging this stuff out and cleaning it out because I'm going to replace this with an early game cooling option that's going to be a little bit more robust. I still will turn this on by the end of the video so that we can still generate water, for, or rather oxygen from water. That is a good option. I'm not going to say don't do that because that's what you eventually want to get to. But we just don't have the water flow right now to deal with it. We won't have the long-term cooling to handle it either. So... I just want to set something up that's going to help us be a little bit more successful. So we had our shipping lines that we're sending phosphorite in here. I'm going to start getting rid of them and we're going to set up something else that's going to allow us to uh, basically run an ice cooler for quite a while. So let's do that. So I'm just going to create a simple setup here, I'm trying to figure out which side to put it on. I think I'll just put it here. Sure. So if we have a little area over here, this is basically going to be like an ice box. Um, I'm going to have my duplicates go and grab a whole bunch of ice from these biomes, because like I mentioned, you will want to mine in here. You don't want to mine everything, but you will want to mine in here to at least get access to sleet wheat. And one of the side effects is that it'll create ice because some of this is ice and you'll mine it out. So you will want to do that. So I'm just going to create a little kind of like freezer box area. This will eventually be fully sealed off, but not right now. You will want your shipping up for this, by the way. And I'm just going to have something to basically send this in. So I'm going to have my I'm let my duplicates uh, load this manually. So we're going to do something like, let's do this. Uh, we can just put it in some bins at first. So we put a handful of bins down like that. Then we have some shipping stuff right above it. I'm going to ask my duplicates to bring ice whenever they mine it out, kind of similarly to how we do with the slime. And then when they do mine it out, I'm just going to drop it into the ice box. And then when it's needed in here, I'm going to have the ice box ship it in here and start cooling some water. So let me flesh this out a little bit so we're not watching all the excruciating detail of this and waiting for our duplicates to do something. So we'll kind of fast forward until a later part. Okay, got this area cleaned up. Let's set up our little ice gathering area. So in these bins, you don't necessarily need this many. I doubt you'll even find this much if you've just been lightly mining, but either way, uh, just to know that you can have a bunch of them here. Anyway, so if you do find any ice, let's just request it at a decent priority. Same thing with snow. I don't really want polluted ice. You could run a separate system for something like this if you really wanted to. Mm, now I'm second guessing myself. Let's do this actually. Let's take both of them and that will allow us to get a lot more water in a very short amount of time. And instead of sending our water that we create straight back, we can just send it through our filtration system. So we might as well just do that. All right, so if we find any type of ice of any sort, ice, polluted ice or snow, I want it to go here. And uh, I want to also request it to be shipped 
at a much higher priority than is going to be going in the bins. Then, whatever it finds here, it's just going to drop into here, and I need to wall this off. So, need a duplicate to uh, get this done here really quickly, and then we will talk about the next part. So, priority seven. We want this part done first, so we can close this off. So my duplicates are just going to run in here and grab the ice, polluted ice, snow, whatever they find, and they're going to run it back. I know what you might be thinking, and um, that is that if you melt the snow and ice that's here in place, it's going to yield double the water that you would normally need. But I don't want to destroy this biome. I really want to keep this natural sleet wheat growing as much as possible, because it's one of the best and uh, most resource light foods there possibly is. So. If you really want to, you can melt these ice biomes, but I just would not recommend it. I would much rather just grab the ice that I have and put it down here like this. Oh, pff, duplicates are just stuck in a loop. Let me stop requesting for just a second so they can finish this up and get this closed off. There we go. Once this gets closed off, now I can just uh, have this hooked up to some kind of automation. Actually, I'm going to need this up here first really quickly. Run our automation wire first, because we only want ice to be coming down here if there's a reason for it to be sent. Um, so what's going to happen is the ice is just going to be sent through our shipping system, and it's just going to kind of like loop back and forth like this through our system. Eventually, you could have it get dropped off at the end here, but I'm not going to do that. Um, it might look like I'm going to, but I'm just going to put a conveyor chute down there, and I'm going to hook it up to like one automation wire. If I do that, that's just going to keep this vent closed at all times, which will keep this line full of ice as much as possible. And that will uh, allow us to... I guess we don't need these uh, automatic or other auto sweepers. Uh, that'll just allow the ice to sit in here in small packets and spread its temperature more evenly with whatever it's interacting with. Uh, it's going to be a mixture of uh, polluted water and regular water, so let's get this all sealed off here. We will only ask for more if we're if we're too low on water, and this will kind of double over as a bunch of different things as time goes on. Um, eventually, you could stop sending polluted ice here and only send like regular ice and stuff. Um, but since we're in such dire straits in terms of water generation, we might as well just send both. So what I'm going to do is I will put a liquid pump at the top of this, and I'll just put it at the top because I want this to be as submerged with water as I possibly can. And then this pump is just going to be sent back down into our filtration system. So if it's regular water or polluted water, it's just going to go through here, get cleaned, and come back out and get sent to the other places it's supposed to go. Oh, by the way, all this area has been rebuilt. Uh, I did that during our little break here. Just going to be adding to our meal wood and make sure we don't drop below any danger thresholds with our food. Again, this is not exactly about food. I did just do a video on that recently, but the water and food are very intertwined. A lot of times so I'm just going to get this uh, all built out with my duplicates here really quickly so that we at least have wait why did that get taken away that was weird uh, so at least we have something to start off with we're not just sitting here watching my duplicates do something then we'll hook up the rest here in just a second so I'll be right back okay got this all built out the next thing we're gonna want to do is only allow this conveyor loader to send more ice if we are running low on water down here so just going to hook up a wire to my automation wire, or rather to my hydro sensor here. And then if this is ever below a certain amount of water, I'm going to ask more ice to be sent through this line. And that's going to melt uh, as it interacts with the stuff down here. Now I know what you might be thinking, and that is that the ice, if it's interacting with gas, is going to be nowhere near as effective as it interacting with some kind of liquid. So I do want to talk about this, um, this cool steam vent. A lot of times it'll naturally spawn something like this on the map with this area to collect a bunch of hot water. So it's not always useless uh, like it seems because this hot water is obviously way too hot to keep our food uh, going, which by the way, just the water being generated from our algae distillers is running this whole area right now. So it doesn't seem like we have a lot of water flow, but because we're using so little, we're actually able to keep this up now. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's way too hot to be used in pretty much any uh, application. So this is going to be the medium that we use to transfer heat into all the ice that comes down here, which will both cool that water and create a whole bunch more water at the same time. So I'm going to start setting up something like that. Just kind of get a ladder to come in here from the side. I'll put a pump down here. We'll start pumping this out and sending it into this area. And then we'll start sending, or rather ice will already be coming in here because it'll be... Uh, low enough with our hydro sensor. Let's say if it's below like 
I don't know, 100 kilograms or something like that, then we need to send in more ice. So in the meantime, my duplicates have just been grabbing ice, running it into these bins. So we've got a nice pile of ice and polluted ice here and some snow. We'll get them all shipped out here in just a second. So let me get this part built out. Okay, we've got our hot water area all captured. Just going to be with a liquid pump down here made of gold amalgam, just in case it is really hot. Uh, the gold amalgam can resist it for quite a while. Uh, yeah, and then it's just going to be going up through some insulated liquid pipe and be dropping off in our tank here. So the reason this is going to matter is because when you have uh, anything that's interacting with any other substance, the density really matters a lot. So if you look at the density of the gas here, it's only like 1.5 kilograms. If I were to send ice down this line, which I will start to spec it out for. There we go. If I were to send ice down this line, it's only going to be interacting with a really low density of oxygen. Whereas once the water starts flowing from the uh, pump, it's going to be way more dense here. Like almost a thousand times as dense, which means that the temperature exchange is going to happen a lot faster once it gets down here. So all this is going to be doing is going to be going up to a conveyor chute and the conveyor chute's going to be closed because it has an automation wire that's uh, on there right now just to keep it closed, sending a red signal. As the ice and everything starts to interact with this water down here, you can see how much how quickly this interacts. So it'll start to freeze the water if there's not enough in here or whatever. And then as the pump starts sending in our hot water, it'll melt all this and it'll start melting all the water that's, or rather all the ice that's on the line and turning that into water. <laughs> Duplicants are picking up the ice and taking it back here. That's definitely not exactly what we had intended, but once the hot water gets here, it'll start fixing some stuff. It's like instantly freezing. Okay, there we go. So as we get more hot water in here, you can see how quickly the temperature of the polluted ice and regular ice is going to start to drop quite a bit uh, as it interacts with this. But the problem is that once it melts, it leaves these like empty baskets here. So we're just going to need a simple way to uh, set this up so that this chute opens whenever we know we need to dump some stuff out. There's not a super graceful way to do this, but the easiest way that I've found, I'm just going to do it this way just because uh, I don't want to have to like clean up a mess down here. So I'm just going to use my cheats here for just a second and plop a tile there so that I can replace this tile with a uh, weight sensor. So if you put that down, or sorry, a weight plate, whatever. If I put that down, if there's ever a piece of ice here, that means that the whole thing needs to stop. And uh, that will allow this to go. So if I uh, just set this up to basically say, if it's anywhere below 10 kilograms, then allow this thing to open. Or sorry, allow if it's anywhere above... Oh, there's something sitting on it. I'm like, wait, that was, that was right. What's wrong with that? Uh, let me sweep this off just to get it out of the way here really quickly. Whoa. There. Now when a piece of ice falls here, it will close the vent, meaning that, oh, the water is going to be, like, too uh, cold right now for this to actually work. So we're just going to do something like this, and while this is open, all the empty boxes are just going to uh, go down there. As soon as a single piece of ice comes, it stops the whole system. And there you go. You got yourself a nice little ice melting machine going on here. Uh, you also need to make sure to seal this off eventually, otherwise your duplicates are going to do that. Which is constantly pick this up over and over and run it back to the place we don't really want them to. So uh, you can either do that or once you know you have all the ice here, you can just say, okay, don't bring this to me anymore. We can refill this a little bit later. And if you do ever mine out more of your ice biome, like you can mine this out a little bit of a time, like maybe something like this. Oh, that'll make this fall. Just to get a little bit extra here and there, you can definitely do that. But the reason that I talk about this solution is for two purposes. Um, like I mentioned, for one, we need the water. That's the whole point of this video. But secondly, this can also double as a big cooling area that's just going to be powered by ice. So there we go. We've got ourselves a little bit of a ice melter, water generator, water cooler type of thing, all mixing a bunch of solutions together that you're going to want by this phase of the game anyway to help out with your cooling. Uh, let me fast forward in time just a little bit so you can see this working all at full power rather than just a little bit that we have here. And so you can see the water getting pumped back into our network so we can at least turn these back on and stop burning all of our algae on producing oxygen. So give me just a little bit for this to run. Okay, it's been a cycle or two. 
Got our water levels rising here as we're pumping out more of the hot water and melting some of the ice. So, making some progress. Uh, a couple other things that we're probably going to want to make sure of is that we are only pumping out water uh, when we want to. So I might want to keep this water tank a little bit full, depending on if I'm going to be using it for cooling as well. So for right now, I'm just going to place a hydro sensor to make sure that there's enough water in here that's actually worthwhile to pump. You could put it up a little bit more if you wanted to make sure that it was totally full, but since we're a little low on water right now, we might as well do this. You could also just put a pump right here if you're desperate for water. Um, you could have the water being pumped out basically as soon as it's created. Uh, this is more of a long-term solution. So you could very well just go like that and start pumping it out here because since it's toward the end of the line, uh, this is definitely going to be a lot cooler than where it's coming in from the uh, hot water that we're dumping in here. So that's always an option too. But uh, for a longer-term solution, we're just going to do something like this. The other thing that's gonna that's dawning on me is, depending on if you're playing spaced out or not, this may get so cold that it freezes. Um, I definitely don't want this to be a big block of ice, because that's not going to help me. Uh, I would really rather have this just be cold water. So I'm also going to put a atmos or sorry a, ter a thermo sensor here, and only allow more ice to be sent if it's too hot uh, already in this area. So just going to disconnect a couple of wires here really quickly. Just going to hook this up to an AND gate. I need to make sure that there is not a lot of water and that it's at the right temperature. So I'm just going to do something like this. And then I'm only going to allow it to come in here if it's above, say, I don't know, 10 degrees. Because we're already kind of sitting on that temperature range, but it's only with the water right now. So, or rather only with the air, which is a lot more easily influenced by the water and stuff. But yeah, so... This ought to allow more, um, whoops, I think I did not connect the part up here. There we go. This will only allow uh, more ice in here if it's too warm. And then the stuff that gets pumped out here should stay at a pretty reasonable temperature. So we're now starting to hit the point where we are filling up our water tanks with all this. And like I mentioned, if it is just clean water passing through this, it will just go straight through and it will not need to use any power or anything like that. So yeah, pretty simple, like, early-ish, mid-game solution to generating a bunch more water if you need it. This is actually especially useful on some asteroids in Spaced Out. Uh, but yeah, pretty interesting solution. And then if you start to run out of ice, which you can keep an eye on, I did just mine out a bunch of extra here, so... Now that we have a good amount of water here, we could stop sending our hot water in here if you really wanted to. And then you could seal this off. And then this would just kind of be a constant flow of ice coming in here, creating new water. Um, if you want to, you could also just put the uh, drop off for this inside the tank. So we, can, we might as well just go ahead and do that. There we go. Get this out of the way. Put a little bridge here. And then we'll have to drop it off with a bit. There. So you can just do something like this. Close that off and then ask for more ice here whenever you do mine more of it out. Of course, this is not the uh, best way to do it in terms of like uh, generating water stable, like reliably for a long time. I'm like stably, that's not really a word, but yeah, reliably for a long time. And like I said, the formatting of this video doesn't really match for this one because this last solution is really not very complicated. I'm just going to go over how to capture water geysers and kind of do that in a uh, smart way and not put yourself in a bad position. So, yeah, not really the mad scientist solution, but, you know, we're going to go there anyway. Let's call it good. Okay, time to get angry about water, all you angry scientists. All right, so just looking at this once more, this could have, I guess, been the Mad Scientist solution, but I feel like you're going to hit this need or this time when you're going to want a cool uh, pool of water earlier than when you might find uh, geysers and stuff to keep your uh, base running. So I don't know. I was having a hard time deciding whether to put one or the other first, but this is a good example because this is the walkthrough map that um, I was playing on where I basically run through the entire game back to front and uh, walk you through how to play on the starter asteroid. And on this particular seed, our only source of reliable water 
was way down here at the bottom in the oil biome. It's right here, this polluted water geyser. Uh, let me just dig this out using my cheats really quickly so you can see it. But, there. So, this polluted water vent is really the, one of the best so, uh, methods to get water in the game. Um, but, I didn't put it earlier because sometimes getting down here can be really hard. Or you might be on a map that doesn't really have great water supply. Um, I know that you will see these. So, you will see the cool steam vents. But, the problem is you need to invest so much into cooling to handling this that it's usually not really worth your time. Um... If you're desperate for it, you can, and then you can run some kind of solution similar to this to cool it down. Otherwise, this water is just not useful at all. Especially if you're wanting to make berry sludge, which I definitely recommend. By the way, I was getting a little warm here, so just dropped a couple of weasel warts temporarily until we got our cool water flowing in. Uh, but yeah, so those are a little bit more trouble than they're worth. The saltwater geysers, which are pretty common too, are also... Probably worse than the cool steam vent, only because they put out so much volume at such a high temperature. Just jumping in here and taking these is really not the best of ideas, so I would not recommend that unless you are absolutely at no other option for water. Um, if you have access to a polluted water vent, taking these is pretty simple. Uh, it's not really like a mad scientist solution, which is why I crossed it out on the slide there. It's just <laughs> the... The best option, I guess, is what we'll call it. All you really need to do to, to capture this is you just need to seal it off into a little space like this. Then you're just going to need to put a liquid pump in here. And I will usually like to fill this all the way up. Whoops, I have my cheats on, so it's looking kind of weird. Then I will need to uh, fill this, or I like to wait to fill this all the way up until it's about to here with water. So if it needs to be above, I don't know, like 150. Then this whole cavity will be filled with water. And it will pump it out when it's worthwhile, but it's dormant right now, so we can't really do much with it. Let me load a different save where I actually have this taken, so that you can see what like a fully functioning water setup would look like. This is not really going to be there in this other save. Um, I'm just going to load a different save from the uh, walkthrough that I did, but it'll be one that shows this and kind of like a whole water network all up and going. So we'll just hop over there really quickly to get this finished up. All right, here we go. This is what a fully functioning water setup looks like. And this is from the walkthrough that I did for the base game. Uh, pretty advanced into the game, so that's why this looks so full. But by the time we took our water, uh, we didn't really have any of our oxygen setups uh, up and going here with electrolyzers until after we had really stabilized our water situation. Which is like, you know, as Bob says from Bob's Burgers, just don't let the pan get rusty in the first place. But... You can't always avoid that, but <laughs> yeah. So here's the uh, polluted water vent I was talking about. Built almost exactly the same way that I laid it out. I did not mean to do that, but yeah, this is it functioning right now. So it's basically going to be erupting with polluted water at a pretty high volume of 30 C. Um, it's right on the border of what would be okay for your... Uh, bristle blossoms but in this case uh i do have a cooling loop that was running off of ice earlier exact same idea that i was doing before except my duplicates were just running it here manually just keeping it more simple for the walkthrough there's a bunch of ways to do that but yeah so uh we just have a simple cooling loop going here to handle the slightly warmer temperature of the water that's going to be coming out of that but yeah, this is pretty much it. Um, that's the only thing that's running all of the water that's needed for my base, is this one geyser. Uh, this one geyser feeds up into a whole bunch of tanks here, which uh, the water's just going to sit in this tank until it's needed by my water system again. Uh, and then it will request it, and it will send it through. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I um, guess I don't really have much else to say, and a little bit of an awkward shape to try to fit into the help format. But yeah, hopefully that helped out. If you need it all in more context, I definitely do have a full game walkthrough that I think is pretty helpful for this type of problem. It's usually a problem you shouldn't have to face if everything was started off and ran correctly from the beginning. Um, but yeah, if you get yourself in that situation, here's at least a couple of options. And I have a lot of other so of uh, videos and stuff like that that you could look at to uh, get some ideas of how to manage this. So. Hopefully this helped out. Let me know about it. Sorry I was a little bit goofy, but uh, either way, hopefully it was good. I'll be back with some more videos here really quickly, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here soon.